with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, help us to love others as Christ has loved us. Bring us into the spiritual joy of living our lives as your friends and teach us to abide in your love that we may show that love to the world. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and kids, it's time for Kids Club. So why don't you come up for a second? How's your, how is, how's your week been? Good? Good? Really nice weather. I don't like school. Yeah, I know, school, it's like, yeah, it, gets, it can be a drag sometimes. <laughs> well, you guys are gonna go have fun with Miss Jenna. So let's say a quick blessing. So gracious God, thank you for our young people, our youth. We thank you for their uh, love for you. We ask that they will, um, your Holy Spirit will just help them to learn and grow in their love for you and others. So we ask your blessing. Amen. Amen. You guys go have fun. I can't wait Thank to you hear back what you're going to be okay. studying. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. And now the lessons. Lectura del libro de los hechos de los apóstoles. Todavía estaba hablando Pedro cuando el Espíritu Santo vino sobre todos los que escuchaban su mensaje y los creyentes procedentes del judaísmo que habían llegado con Pedro se quedaron admirados de que el Espíritu Santo fuera dando también a los que no eran judíos, pues los oían hablar en lenguas extranjeras y alabar a Dios. Entonces Pedro dijo, ¿Acaso puede impedirse que sean bautizadas estas personas que han recibido el Espíritu Santo igual que nosotros, y mandó que fueran bautizados en el nombre de Jesucristo. Después, rogaron a Pedro que se quedaran con ellos algunos días. La palabra del Señor. Gracias a Dios. Because of all the incredible things you have done, you are our winner. We'll make sure everyone knows you have a kind of us. Your love for us is faithful through all that we have been through together. Let us break out in song, everyone all over the world. Get your hearts and trumpets and your voices ready to sing praises to God. Let the sea roar with the light, and all the creatures that swim in the sea join in. Let the flood waters clap their hands, and the hills sing in harmony, because our God is coming. When you come to us, God, you will make things right, and even the score between people. Second lesson. Lectura de la primera carta de Juan. Todo el que tiene fe en que Jesús es el Mesías, el Hijo de Dios, y el que ama a un padre, ama también a los hijos de ese padre. Cuando amamos a Dios y hacemos lo que Él manda, sabemos que amamos también a los hijos de Dios. El amar a Dios consiste en obedecer sus mandamientos, y sus mandamientos no son una carga, porque todo el que es hijo de Dios vence al mundo. Y nuestra fe nos ha dado la victoria sobre el mundo. El que cree que Jesús es el Hijo de Dios, vence al mundo. La venida de Jesucristo quedó señalada con agua y sangre. No solo con agua, sino con agua y sangre. El Espíritu mismo es testigo de esto. Y el Espíritu es la verdad. La palabra del Señor. Gracias a Dios.
said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. <clears throat> But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, anyone here, can you guess what the number one most streamed television show was during the first year of COVID? You can take a, a guess. What's that? The Office. No. But close, but what? Tiger King. It, it was in the top ten. Yeah. It was the comedy Friends. People watched it because it was familiar, it provided a sense of comfort, and it showed the life of friends. We had to learn to cope with extreme isolation. How many of you have taken the Myers-Briggs test? How many of you are extroverts? Sarah, I'm shocked. No. Um, yeah. How many of you are um, introverts? I'm a borderline introvert, I'm just over the line. I uh, found this coaster at the hospital that I have on my desk here at the church that says, listen, I still want to be invited, but I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> but we had to learn new skills and we were resilient. Families and neighbors set up bubbles with others to socialize. This was a big help for the children to socialize and play together. We found ways to socialize and keep a sense of normality. A lot of us connected through online meeting apps for work, school, and staying connected with family and friends. Uh, Sue Bennett, she got us right on to Zoom uh, to gather so we could pray and worship together. It wasn't easy, a lot of priests Oh, you should have heard the priest belly aching. Never done this before. They didn't teach us how to do this in seminary. It just, you know, it's like, it's like, get over it and let's just try to connect as best we can. Look at, you know, um, Bishop Fulton Sheen and Robert Schuler. They could be our examples of being on TV. You know, it's like find ways of connecting with each other. And the vestry made weekly calls to stay in touch with the community and to see how everybody was doing and if anybody had any needs. The television show Friends shares a lot about us as human beings. We were created for community, being with other people and socializing is so important. Researchers have noted for many years that being in and staying connected is beneficial for us physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally, and spiritually. 
And I have read this more often than not. And Mike, I'll have to see if, if our um, things that we have learned over, over the times, but like with small group ministries and that, you really shouldn't have a group larger than like eight to 10 people. Uh, part of it is you just can't, you can't be besties with everybody. And you can only be intimate with people um, to a certain degree, but you can't be intimate with everybody because honestly, you can't trust everybody. But we need those intimate personal relationships. Jesus is an example for us. He had a lot of friends. He had a lot of influence. I think Jesus was a borderline introvert like me, uh, but he had those three close friends Remember who he took up to the Mount for Transfiguration? Peter, James, and John. Uh, our patron saint was one of his close, intimate friends. Then he had the other nine disciples, and then he had other intimate relationships with friends like Lazarus and Mary and Martha. We all have certain intimate circles with family and spouses, with work friends, school friends and neighbors. Again, you cannot be besties with everybody, but you can find those people that you will connect with on so many different levels. In our gospel reading this morning, we see Jesus shifting the relationship with his disciples from teacher and disciple and teacher and Lord and servant to friends. I do not call you servants any longer because a servant doesn't know what, his, what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. Debbie Thomas, a, an Episcopal priest uh, in California, um, she says, I, I'll ask my um, kids who are kind of in their teenage years, how was church today? Oh, it's fine. Enjoyed the music? Did you like the readings? Yeah, some of the readings were okay. How was my sermon? What did I preach on? Love. She goes, well, they were right. Because she said, that's a lot of what Jesus taught was love. Loving God, loving others, loving ourselves. I've made everything known to you. I've heard from my father. So what is your relationship with Jesus this morning? Do you feel like it is still the teacher and disciple or Lord and servant? You see, Jesus calling us friends is a big deal. And there's a stark difference between teacher and disciple, Lord and servant with friend. I mean, there's different intimacies. Um, some of you saw Saul. Being a teacher, you, you have certain intimacies with students, but boy, there's, there's boundaries. There's certain things. Um, some of the teachers that we have, the eight o'clock service, you know, they have boundaries. They care for their students and their families, but there's only a certain, there's only so much they can do. But again, but you have those relationships with the other teachers, but we, you know, we have different communities that we have different intimacies with. Friday, we had a, a short meeting at the hospital, and my chaplain supervisor said, I have one last thing I want to share with you. And our hearts kind of sank, and she says, I'm retiring. I've known Anna Lee since 2004, and I'd been a student while she was a staff chaplain, and then she became our, our supervisor. Um, and we have um, the shared relationship of experiences we've gone through together at the hospital. And it, and I'm sad. Um, many of us there, um, the other registry chaplains, we were sad because we're going to miss Anna Lee. And I would do anything for her. And I know how much she cares for us and how much we cared for her. And it would just be a big loss at, in our community at the hospital. I haven't made, I haven't talked too much about my priest, mentor, and friend during my time of discernment, Father Parker. Um, he gave me sage advice during the journey. 
He said, uh, one of the things I, I always remember, and I bring it up at different times, he says, Don, remember, Jesus never ran a parish. That's funny. Um, and uh, he said, oh, I told my son you were discerning for the diaconate or the priesthood. And I said, what did, what did, what did your son Stacy have to say? And he said, don't do it. That was funny too. Um, but he gave sage advice during the journey. And after ordination, we became peers. And we shared a love and loyalty for each other that friends in the same vocation have because of that shared experience you don't have with anyone else. And I think all of you have had that experience in your vocation at some time. Friendship with Jesus, if you've listened to the Gospels the last two weeks, it's all about abiding in that friendship, that love of God. Two weeks ago, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. We are the sheep. We have someone who cares and uh, is with us all the time, watches over us. Last Sunday, I am the true vine. We are the branches. And we get our spiritual nourishment from God. And Jesus was pretty open about it. We will get pruned sometimes. Why? So we'll bear more fruit. We may go through difficult times. We may go through times that we need to be pruned so that we will produce more good fruit for the kingdom. Abide in me, I'll abide in you. Abide in my agape, unconditional love. Abide in God's unconditional love. By this, we know that we are the children of God when we love God and obey God's teachings. Following Jesus is all about having this intimate relationship with him. And I, I'm the first to admit, life can be overwhelming. And God can seem far away at the most difficult times in our life. But I've discovered over the years that when I slow down and I push some of the noise and chaos out, and I slow down enough that I can meditate on Jesus' words and teachings and spend time giving thanks for all the blessings that I have received over the years and thankful for this relationship with God. Life doesn't seem so daunting. Jesus went through so much of what we face in life in his 33 years. That's why it's so easy, I should say, that we can connect with Jesus. I had one friend one time say, I just can't relate to God. I said, well, I hope not. <laughs> I hope that you'll relate to Jesus because that's why God took on our flesh, lived and dwelt among us, experienced what we experience. So in closing, I want to pray a prayer by Malcolm Boyd. How many of you know about Malcolm Boyd? Any of you? Oh, I, I ordered his book. Um, he was uh, a... Uh, he had a long and intimate relationship with Jesus as a follower and an activist and a priest. And I think he died back in 2004. He was 91 years old, um, very influential back in the 60s. But he wrote a book, Are You Running With Me, Jesus? And this is a prayer simply called A Morning Prayer. And I have copies I made for you all if you want to take one with you today. It's morning, Jesus. It's morning and here's that light and sound all over again. I gotta move fast. Get into the bathroom, wash up, grab a bite to eat and run some more. I just don't feel like it, Lord. What I really want to do is get back into bed, pull up the covers and sleep. All I seem to want today is the big sleep. And here I've got to run all over again. Where am I running? You know these things I can't understand. It's not that I need to have you tell me. 
But what counts most is just that somebody knows and it's you. That helps a lot. So I'll follow along, okay. But lead me, Lord. Now I've got to run. Are you running with me, Jesus? There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. He's with us always. And he's willing to run with you through life. Amen. 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 Please stand as you are able and let us confirm our common faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, God did not be, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sing for joy, O God, for you are coming to judge the world with righteousness and fairness between nations and between people. Lord, you call us friends. We are our prayers and help us to love like you. We pray for the poor, the hungry, and the needy, as well as for those who abuse and oppress them, both here and abroad. Help us to find the solutions that will bring healing and wholeness to the problems we create and the problems caused by those who only care for power and wealth. Lord, you call us friends. Hear our prayers and help us to love like you. Comfort those who suffer and chasten those who cause their suffering, that your justice may be known in all the earth. Lord, you call us friends. Hear our prayers and help us love like you. We pray for families, communities, and nations torn apart by violence. Heal the broken places and imbue your earth with peace. We pray for you, your, you and your people all around the world that we will be your love, healing, and repair in the world. Lord, you call us friends. Hear our prayers and help us to love like you. We pray for the sick and the dying, for those who are friendless and lonely, for those living with grief or depression. We pray for those in need of our prayers, remembering Karen, Linda, Julia, Liz, Irene, St. James Anglican Parish, Quebec, and Karen. Bring them your friendship himself and renew their joy. Lord, you call us friends, Hear our prayers and help us to love like you. Lord, we remember Al and Jerry, be with them. Um, 
and as they heal and recover. And we give you thanks for uh, the good news that the three dioceses in Wisconsin have voted to uh, reunify and that there'll be one, uh, one diocese with one bishop. Uh, they've been struggling and we thank you um, as they look to their future ahead. We pray for those who have been impacted by the tornadoes and flooding uh, from Texas up to the Midwest. We pray for those who've lost their lives, those who have lost their, um, their, their personal um, uh, effects and homes. We pray for those who have been rescue workers and those who will help to restore communities and lives. Be with them and help us to respond in ways tangible. We pray for ourselves, your church, that we may bear fruit of peace, hope, and love, fruit that will last. Now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our friend, and in the Holy Spirit poured out on us, we sing a new song to praise you, for you are doing marvelous things. Amen. Amen. All right, I got it from the eight o'clock service. So if you all want to shake hands, we can. <laughs> um, as we pass the peace. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. <laughs> This makes the service longer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So many things that we can, uh, we're just so grateful for to be blessed about. Uh, one of the things that uh, you may have seen that we're praying for, St. James Anglican Church in Quebec. That is Christine's uh, home parish. Um, and so, um, baptized confirmed there? Um, married there. I know you said you were married there, but family. Uh, well, the but none of us left there anymore, but it is my your, your family perished in that. And, um, but they had a devastating fire that burned the uh, roof of, the, of their church, the nave, and the parish house. It's a very active parish in the community. It is used for um, all sorts of uh, community groups and that. And uh, I got to watch some of the videos um, uh, on the news, and people are like, oh, we had you know, family baptized and confirmed and married and buried from here. And people uh, were just very uh, uh, distraught by the devastation. But fortunately, um, the walls of the church are stone. So the walls seem to have done OK. And the windows uh, survived. Many of the windows survived. So um, I sent a small gift out of discretionary uh, to them uh, to just say from St. James, West Indy to St. James, Quebec. Um, it's, it's nice to be a part of, a, um, of the Anglican communion of this um, place we have in the connection. So I, I told Christine we were going to send something up. And so we we'll wait to hear from them and just to encourage them. Uh, I wish I could have sent more, but I haven't won Mega Millions or Powerball yet um, to, to do lots more good. But uh, it's the good we do. Um, these small gifts can, can make a big difference. Um, and today is the uh, first Sunday of the month, so we have our first Sunday offering box up here. So if you have an extra dollar, um, our funds, the first six months of the year are going to go uh, to help support physical charities here in the diocese. So um, if you have that extra gift, thank you. 
Well, as we prepare our hearts to come to Christ's table, let us show our friendship with Christ and our love for our neighbors by giving generously so that we may bear that lasting fruit of Christ's love. Amen. 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 salvation. 
Then in the fullness of time you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The supper was ending. Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. James and all of your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah.
made us in your image, and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And may the righteous fairness of God, the loving friendship of Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit go with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you.